Nebuchadnezzar had to go to the bush for seven years to eat grass and become like the beast of the field was because he didn't learn the process. He didn't learn the lesson. So God said, you were, eh? you become big. You were king. You have all this wealth and everything. Go to the forest. Be like a beast. The day that you acknowledge that the heavens do rule in the affairs of men, your reasoning will come back to you and you come back to your palace as a king. Until then, you are reduced to the status of an animal because you didn't learn the lesson. There are a lot of people rising in this life without learning the lessons because they haven't been through process. And everything goes in today's society. People don't care how they make it. Just make it. Because our definition of success is different from God's definition of success. Just succeed. Lie to succeed. Kill to succeed. Scheme to succeed. Misrepresent to succeed. Destroy to succeed. Do anything to succeed. Don't worry about how you get there and how you get it. Just get it. And you become a star and people will celebrate you. It's a sick society and that's why we don't have longevity in anything because everybody does it without the rules. If you win a race and you violate the rules, you'll be disqualified even though you have won. You know something? I don't want to run this race and be disqualified at the end. Paul said the other day, he said, I have learned to bring my body under subjection lest I preach to others and be a castaway after I have preached to others. So what do I do? I bring my body under subjection because this body is rebellion and stubborn. If you don't discipline this body, it will mess you up. Because the body is already condemned. The body profited nothing, but the spirit gave it life. Lift up your hands and shout yes. yes. Hebrews 10, 36. For ye have need of patience. For you have need of patience. This word patience is not heard or preach about in the church anymore. We don't talk about patience. Everything is about faith. Power. Acceleration. Quick. Fast. Now. Nobody is talking about patience. But when a woman carries a seed without patience, without endurance, she can't deliver that baby. You can have a dream. You can have a vision. You can have a desire, a wish, or a want. But if you don't subject that dream to patience, through process, that dream can die prematurely. And there are a lot of people dead, lying in the cemeteries of our cities and our nation. They died before their time because they had dreams that drove them to die prematurely because they won't subject their dreams and their vision to process. The rules of engagement will expose you to battles you are not ready to fight. There are some dreams, there are some visions. If you have it and you don't exercise your spiritual muscles and develop the necessary capabilities or capacity or stamina to handle the dream, the exposure of those dreams can kill you. A lot of the rock music stars and a lot of the footballers and basketball foot stars they end up broke. They end up broke. You know why? Because they make so much money. Somebody who have never saved a hundred thousand dollars before, through some gift, 
signs a deal of a hundred million dollars a year. He can't, he can't maintain it. He buys a house of 20 million dollars and invests 10 million dollars in all the latest sports cars in his house. I had a friend, he had a garage with an air conditions and all his cars was in an air conditioned garage. Every best cars in the world, they were all in the garage with an air condition. If you've been through process and you earn it through process, you develop compassion for society, you have love for country, love for people, love for the needy, and you help people. The reason why people come into wealth and all they do is to buy brand new cars. I'm not saying there is anything wrong with cars. I like cars. I like cars myself. But with the kinds of responsibility I carry, the drug rehabs and the orphanage, girls on the street, and the things I'm doing, even though I admire and like cars, when I see what price of some of the cars I like can do, I don't want the car. Because you see, the car, if I can help some of these girls on the street and do some of the things I want to do that will not give me personal pleasure, but it will put a smile on the face of somebody, that is a satisfaction. Are you hearing me, somebody? Because whenever you can do something for somebody who can't do anything for you in return, that is where true satisfactions come from. But if you do things for people and they can do something to reward you, there's no satisfaction. I was telling them in the first service, if you help young lady, a young beautiful, you help her. And after you help her, she offers you her body or you demand and insist that she should sleep with you. There is no satisfaction in that. That is abuse of position, office, power or resources. A real man, a true man and a real man, is one that has cultivated and developed the capacity of working free from what you like and you admire. You look at, you look at her, she got everything you want. And you look at her and say, okay baby, you got it. I feel you, but you in mind. Until, brother, until you develop that power in the choir where you can see all these beautiful chicks. You hear me? And you can feel them, but you are able to walk and say, girl, you may have everything I want, but you are in mine. Until that day, you don't have power. You lack power and you lack character. Ye have need of patience. Today there is no patience in our society. The youths of today, everybody is in haste. And people, people who are in haste to go somewhere, they die early. I've watched it for 40 years. So these days, I'm not impressed by people, whether you're a preacher, whether you're a man of God, a prophet, a politician, whether you are in corporate, I don't care who you are. If I see you dig, 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 grabbing, grabbing, that want to prove a point, I pity you, you won't last. And the reason why things happen to people, eh, and it keep happening, we don't learn from history. I am a student of history, so I fight my battles differently. I have learned to hold my peace and to let time fight the battles I can't fight today. Vindication is in the womb of time. There are some battles you will never win until you leave it to time. The future is for those 
who have learned to wait and to endure. If you can't wait, if you can't endure, it's an indication that you won't last long. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. 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 It means that there is a possibility after doing the will of God for you to miss the promise. It means you can miss it. You can do the right thing. You can do the will of God and still miss it. If you don't follow the process. Now let me break it down. We want to look at somebody like the first Adam. The first Adam was created and formed. But the first Adam was not born. And the first Adam did not go through process. And it's one of the reasons why he failed. If you don't go through process, you will not have value or respect for what you have. You don't know the value of a thing till it costs you something. And young ladies, young ladies, I know he's cute, smells good, knows the right thing to say and make you laugh. He makes you laugh. But put him through the process. Because marriage is not looks. Marriage is not beauty. Marriage is not charm. And marriage is not sex. And marriage is not chemistry. Marriage is responsibility. And marriage is purpose. Who said you should marry? If you marry because they said your marriage has failed, you should be convinced. You should be convicted. You should have that assurance and knowing why you are marrying. If you marry for looks, when the looks changes, you are in trouble. Marriage is not for everybody. Did you hear what I said? Marriage is not for everybody. Marriage is not for boys. Marriage is for men. Marriage is not for girls. Marriage is for wives. Come with me to the book of Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee. First of all, I created you. You see, that is, that is the problem with a lot of us. We don't understand the difference between being created and being formed. And until you understand the difference between being created and being formed, you will miss it. He said, I created you and I formed you. Go ahead. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O he Israel. He that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, uh -huh. for I have redeemed he thee. He said, I've created you, I've formed you, I've redeemed you. And I've called thee by thy name. And you bear my name. That thou art mine. You are mine. When thou passest through the waters, he I said, will you be with you. go through the waters. It's a process. Don't avoid it. Tell somebody, don't avoid the process. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Say, say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. 